Father, thank you so much for allowing us to come before you today. Lord, we thank you. And thank you for all the things that you have provided us. And thank you for great salvation that you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. And you gave us the salvation by dying on the cross, by shedding blood on the cross. So, Lord, we thank you. Today we are here because of your grace. And, Lord, help us to understand your grace more and more so that we can also give this grace to other people. Lord, also we uh, continue to pray for the people around us. We want to share the good news to them. But many times, Lord, we cannot do that because of uh, many reasons. But, Lord, you give us strength and also open their heart so that they can take it, your word. And Lord, also we pray, uh, the world is in chaos. Everywhere there is a war, and many things are going on, diseases, war, and many things, Lord. So Lord, help us so that we can prepare ourselves. And Lord, we know that your coming is very near. Lord, uh, help us so that we can do as much as, po as much as possible the work of you. Lord, we thank you. And today, we are here to be encouraged. So, Lord, give us the word so that we can be strengthened. Thank you once again, and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, uh, let's turn to the book of John, chapter 14. We have been learning the book of John. Uh, it has been, I think, more than years. So, time to time, I share some of the topic, but uh, we, are, we try to learn the book of John one time so that we can uh, really understand the love of God and that can, uh, that can motivate our heart. Okay, uh, John chapter 14, verse 16 to 20. John chapter 14, verse 16 to 20. Shall we read together if we found? Um, let us read whatever version may be. Let us read together. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Okay, may God bless each one of us through reading his holy word. So, uh, we have been learning the um, book of John, and I think those who are coming and listening regularly, you may get a lot of uh, understanding and a lot of benefit to you. Today, uh, this portion will meditate, will uh, think about this. As we learn, Jesus talked many things about himself to his disciples. How many years? Three and a half years, right? We know, three and a half years. Now, as we learned last time also, I think uh, we learned that um, now for him, it's a time to depart. It's time to leave them. So, he gave them hope. In my father's house, there are many mansions in uh, verse 1 and 2, right? In my father, there are many mansions. And I go to my father and prepare a place for you. And I will come back to take you where I am, you may be also. So that's what we, we learned earlier. And, you know, as a Christians. Our hope is not in this world. Our hope is in heaven, not in this world. And in heaven, we know that there will be no tears, there will be no suffering, there will be no difficulties in heaven. And heaven is a perfect place. And our Lord wants us to take in that place in heaven. He doesn't want us to, you know, uh, live forever in this cursed world. This world is cursed, as we know. So if Christians only hope in this world, then we are very miserable. 
because you know Christians because we believe in Jesus because we become a Christians you know the world hate us this that also we learn because they hate me they also will hate you because Satan working uh, through the unbelievers right and this world is given to Satan the authority is given to Satan so Christians for Christians our hope is not in this world but in heaven for Christians there is a there is a place that our God who created everything he preserved for us so Jesus said that you know uh, last Sunday I mean not last Sunday previous Sunday I think we learned that um, Jesus said that you will do the greater things than the um, the miracles the signs what Jesus has performed right we will do the greater miracles we will do the greater work what is the greater work the greater work is to save the soul to save the uh, un uh, sinners this is the greater work so when the Holy Spirit comes when we uh, we came to know the uh, the Lord then we can do that work so that's why Jesus said you will do the greater work whatever we also learned that um, memory verse whatever we seek then God will give us right so that is the great you know great great comfort for Christians we can do the greater work what Jesus has done and we are you know uh, we will be given whatever we ask to our father right and that's the comfort for Christians Okay, let's go back to um, verse 16. Let me, read, let me read again. And I will, pay, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Now, uh, Jesus said, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we know they are equal. They are one. We believe that triune God. Of course, expa explaining triune God is, is very difficult. To understand is also is difficult. But we believe that there's a one God and they have a uh, different personality. You know, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They have a different personality. And uh, there's a one God. And uh, now, why Jesus say that I will pray the Father? I will pray the Father. If there is a same, then why Jesus say that I will pray the Father? Actually, Jesus, uh, Jesus prayed because he brought the highest glory to the Father God by asking, by praying. Of course, they are equal. Okay, they are equal. So Jesus prayed the Holy Spirit to come. And when he prayed, the Holy Spirit came down. And we know that is Pentecost day right on the day of Pentecost the Holy Spirit came down so we we'll learn in detail this is very important to understand about the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the helper and he guarantees the grace of God and he deliver and declares the grace of God to us by the help of Holy Spirit we can understand the grace of God Without the help of Holy Spirit, we cannot understand. So what is the work of the Holy Spirit? To help them, to, to help us to understand what God has planned and what Jesus has done. And what is the, what is the ministry of God the Father? He planned, right? And the ministry of Jesus Christ is to finish the work. So they have different ministry. One God, they are in uh, three in one. We can say three in one but different personality and different ministry. So God, the Father, ministry, we can see that in the Old Testament, and the ministry of Jesus Christ we can see when he was on this earth, and the, now is the ministry of Holy Spirit, the, the work of Holy Spirit, now, in, in our time, until Jesus returned. The work of Holy Spirit we can see. And Jesus said um, that I will pray that another helper may come so this Holy Spirit is helping each one of us even non-believers this Holy Spirit is helping and for Christians Holy Spirit is helping to guide us 
to know the truth, to know, uh, you know, to know the will of God. That's the Holy Spirit helping to the Christians. And in another version, it is called Holy Spirit is called Comforter, who comfort in our difficulties. Actually, when Christians we go through the difficulties, we go through suffering and troubles. That time, you know, Holy Spirit comfort us, and that's how we get a comfort. You know, now let's say Stephen was thrown uh, uh, stoned to death. That time, who comfort him? It is the Holy Spirit. When Apostle Paul was suffering so much while preaching the gospel, it is the Holy Spirit comfort him. That's why he could regain and he could continue to serve. I mean, he could, he could continue to work for God. He could continue to preach the gospel. Holy Spirit is the one who bear witness what Jesus has achieved on the cross. And the Holy Spirit is the one who help us to believe that. It is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit also knows our weakness. You know, we have so many weaknesses and the Holy Spirit knows that. And He is still praying for us and He is protecting us from the, uh, from the you know, uh, wrong doctrine and from, the, from enemies and from many things. Holy Spirit protect us. And the Holy Spirit is also called the counselor. You know, counselor. Holy Spirit counsel us. Sometimes because we need the counselor. When we are having trials and afflictions, we need counselor. Right? When we do something, we need counselor. So, Holy Spirit is also called counselor. Anyway, in all, in all, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of grace. So, we can understand the grace of God more and more by the help of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit help us to receive the salvation and help us to understand the grace of God more and more in our life. Without the help of Holy Spirit, we cannot understand the grace of God. So, those, you know, Bible said in um, uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. And Ephesians also, it says, Ephesians chapter 4, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we may grieve the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we may quench the Holy Spirit. So, you know, uh, when we we don't we when we are not careful in our life, then we can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can make cry to the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Corinthian. Uh, we'll turn to Corinthian. Holy Spirit always lead us how we should live. Holy, um, First Corinthians, chapter two, verse twelve. Let us read together. Chapter two, verse twelve. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know that things that have been freely given to us by God. So here we see that now. We have received. We means Christians, right? We have received not the spirit of the world, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So this Holy Spirit is given to us. Those who do not believe the grace given by Jesus Christ, they are the one who insulted the spirit of grace. Holy Spirit testifies of the work of Jesus Christ or the gospel. So if anyone, you know, uh, doesn't take the grace of God or if anyone against, stand against the gospel, then that is the, that is the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit or against the grace of God. So we should know the work of Holy Spirit. There are many Bible verses in the Old Testament. We know talks about the uh, talks about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament and the New Testament. How Holy Spirit work is different. As I said earlier, 
In the Old Testament, we can see more the ministry of God the Father. And before the Pentecost, we can see more about the work of the Son of God, means Jesus Christ. And after Jesus ascended, we can see the work of the Holy Spirit more. And this, this time is the work of Holy Spirit. So in the Old Testament, um, we can say that God will send the Holy Spirit and we can see um, in many places in the Old Testament, like uh, Leviticus chapter 23, that Holy Spirit comes and it talks also like um, about the, through its comparing the festivals, right, uh, Jews festivals. And we can understand there about the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, in the Old Testament in Leviticus, we can see that it says the festivals of Jews people. Israelites keep the festival. Seven, fe seven feasts, seven festivals. So they keep that festival. And among them, the three festivals are very important. What are those? Passover and Pentecost and you know, the Feast of Tabernacle. So among these seven, the three is very important. And wherever they are, they come to celebrate these festivals in Jerusalem. So they come to Jerusalem to keep these festivals. So what is a Passover? Passover celebrate that Jesus would die on the cross as the lamb. Right? That is a Passover. And we know Passover. Passover when God bring Israel people out from the Egypt. That is Passover. Right? They put the blood on the doorpost and you will pass over. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. So that is the Passover. And God command them to keep this Passover. And after Passover, there are feasts that they should keep. Unleavened bread. For how many days? Seven days. And then the uh, feast of first fruit comes which is called Feast of Tabernacles. And the first fruits is the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. I think you know, right? The first fruit, it is the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. Jesus came on this world and he became, he died on the cross and after that, after three days, he was resurrected. That means he became the first fruit of resurrection. He is the one who is resurrected first. And we all will be resurrected like Jesus Christ one day. So he is the first fruit. The others all are, we are the next fruits. Okay? I, I think you, uh, you know about that. So let's go further, uh, forward. For, from the feast of the first fruits, we count seven Sabbath. Seven, one Sabbath means how much? One week, right? Sabbath is the Saturday now in our time. So seven Sabbath means 49 days, right? So after seven Sabbath, next is what? Pentecost. So 50 days after Jesus' resurrection or Jesus ascended, um, 50 days, it is the uh, Pentecost. And what is a Pentecost? We have to understand this. Pentecost signifies the coming down of the Holy Spirit. On the Pentecost day, uh, the Holy Spirit came down. But Israel people, they are told to celebrate the Pentecost in the Old Testament. And they have been doing. And this signifies that the Holy Spirit, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And after the resurrection, Jesus was in this world for 40 days. He was eating with the disciples. He was seen by many people, right? And after that, he was ascended into heaven. So 10 days after his ascension, the Holy Spirit comes. He was 40 days and he was ascended after 40 days. And after 10 days, the Holy Spirit came down in this world. And that is called Pentecost Day. And this Pentecost was different from other festivals. So we, we have to know this. This Pentecost is different than other feasts or other 
festival. What is the difference? The Jews offer grain offering for every festival. They offer, usually they offer one loaf of unleavened bread. They don't offer living bread. Living is represent sin, right? So they present, I mean, they offer to God unleavened bread. But on the Pentecost day, they prepare two loaves of un, uh, living bread, not unleavened. Living bread, they offer to God as a grain offering. These two these two loaves of living bread represent Israelites and uh, Gentiles. Other, other days, they, uh, they present to God only unleavened bread and one bread. But Pentecost Day, living bread and two, uh, two, living bread, two living bread. Not one, two living bread. So that shows that um, uh, Gentile and Gentile and Jews people all are same, sinner before God. There's no different. Living means sin, right? So we are not different. We are same before God. Israel and uh, Gentiles, Israel people and Gentiles, they are different. Two loaves of the living bread as a grain offering means when the Holy Spirit comes, the Jews and the Gentiles will be united in the Holy Spirit and come to God the Father together. When Holy Spirit comes, by the power of Holy Spirit, by the conviction of Holy Spirit, we understand the grace of God. And that time we are united with the with the God the Father. No more Gentile, no more like uh, uh, Jews. We all are same when we accept Jesus Christ. So that is the when they offer to uh, grain offer to two loaves when they offer to God. That it shows that we will be united in God's the Father through by the grace. Okay, let's go to Ephesians chapter two verse eighteen. Ephesians chapter two verse eighteen. Um, let's shall we read it together? For through him we both have access by one spirit to Father. For, for through him we both. Who are we both? We both are uh, Gentile and the Jews. Or non-believers and believers. So there is no difference. We, we, are, we are in one spirit to the Father. We are brought to the Father by one spirit. And that is the Holy Spirit. So who, who is Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is the God. Holy, Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. He teaches us the truth. He testifies about the truth. Who is truth? Jesus is also truth. God is also truth, right? And also He helped us to understand and realize Jesus Christ who is the truth. So by the help of Holy Spirit, we realize that Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the only way because Holy Spirit testifies us to us about Jesus Christ, about the truth, about the God. In First John, let's go to First John, chapter five, verse six. First John, chapter five, verse six. Let me read. This is he who come, who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And is the Spirit who bear witness because the Spirit is truth. This is he who came by water. This water is not actually water, uh, literal water, but this water is about word. Word. Came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. That means he come. According to the God prophesy, right? God already told that Jesus will come. He will come as a human being. He will come in the form of human being. And according to, he came. And he took the, I mean, human flesh. So he come with the blood. To set the blood. The Holy Spirit bear witness 
of the truth. And at the same time, Holy Spirit is the truth himself. He bear the witness of the truth and he himself is the truth. Holy Spirit bear witness the truth. And he helped to understand about the truth. He helped understand people of Jesus Christ. And also he lead us into the truth. So those who, can, who are convinced by the Holy Spirit, they are, lead, they are led in the truth. They accept Jesus Christ. They can understand about the truth. Why? Here it says that the world cannot understand. Right? Uh, let me go back. John chapter 14. Let me go back. And let me read verse 17. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. With the world cannot receive, the world cannot understand about the Holy Spirit, about the truth, about Jesus Christ, about the, the spirit, right? The, uh, the spirit of truth. Why? The world cannot understand the truth and cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Why? Because spiritual things are discerned by spiritual things, right? Bible says spiritual things are discerned spiritually. So they cannot understand. And sometimes, um, you know, uh, for people those who come in the church and even they experience many things, for them it's useless. All gathering, coming to church is useless, right? And offering to God and, uh, you know, uh, dying for God, giving, sacrificing for God, giving life for God, for them is useless because they cannot understand spiritual things. Let's go back again, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2. Verse 13 and 14. 13 and 14 I will read. These things we also speak not in word, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he knew them, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, now... Here it says, natural man, that means uh, like a normal man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. And they cannot understand. And for them it's like a foolish. Right? They cannot understand. Does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. The Word of God cannot be learned with the worldly wisdom and with the worldly knowledge. That can be understood only by the Spirit. Only by the help of spirit. That's why you will see many people. Uh, I'm I'm not um, criticizing or condemning the seminary, but there are many people who come to the uh, to study the seminary, but and later they go out saying that okay, uh, we are qualified to preach to preach the gospel to uh, unbelievers, right? They go they go out like that, but. Do you think that can understand? So that's why, even though they are graduated, even though they are, you know, uh, maybe PhD or MTH or whatever maybe, unless they are convinced by Holy Spirit, unless they accept which is given by Holy Spirit, they cannot understand. So, you know, uh, many people works, many people works. For, for, their, uh, for their own, not for God. To manage their life, not for God. And we can see, you know, uh, many people are living like a um, uh, bad example. Of course, people, the world people know that they are Christians, but their life is bad example because they are not convinced by this Holy Spirit. So they cannot understand. No matter how much you study without the help of the Holy Spirit, you cannot understand the truth. The true meaning of the Word of God or true meaning of um, the Jesus, what He said. We cannot understand. Holy Spirit helped us to understand. And the Holy Spirit came to the world on the day of Pentecost as a helper. So Jesus said, I pray. I will pray to my Father so that He sent another helper. 
So Holy Spirit is helping to us to understand. Even today, after born again, Holy Spirit help us to understand, to discern which is wrong, which is right, which direction I should go, how to read the Bible. When we read the Bible, actually we have to seek the power of Holy Spirit. Then we understand. So when we neglect the Holy Spirit, we cannot understand even we read. Don't think that just we understand. And how can we, uh, we get the help from the Holy Spirit? It is with the attitude. You know, we need to pray that Holy Spirit may help us. You know, uh, Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. But individually to us, when Holy Spirit comes, when we understand, when we receive the salvation, when we listen the gospel and receive the salvation, there is the time Holy Spirit came to us. And the Holy Spirit is residing in us. And that's why in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 say that we were sealed with the promise of Holy Spirit. The moment we are saved, we are sealed by Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit came to us and He sealed us that this man belongs to God. Then we seal. He sealed, right? This man belongs to God. Like a government official, they seal. This belongs to government. Right? Like the seal. So, this, which is sealed by Holy Spirit, that cannot be perished or that cannot be taken away. That belongs forever for the Lord. So some people say like this, our salvation can be lost. But this is sealed by Holy Spirit. That cannot be lost. So Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 tells us clearly, when we listen the gospel and receive the forgiveness of sin by faith, that time Holy Spirit comes to us. However, many people do not know the Holy Spirit is dwelling in them. Even though Holy Spirit is already came to them, but they don't realize and they don't know about that. And when they do not know the Holy Spirit is with them, they cannot be led by Holy Spirit. Why? Because if they do not know the Holy Spirit is with them, you know, they will follow the desire of the flesh and they will sin again and again. And they cannot live a good Christian's life. So we have to know. If suppose, suppose, let's say, uh, you're, you're carrying the egg. You know, egg easily can be broken. You don't know that you're carrying the egg. Of course you are carrying bag. There is an egg in your bag. But if you don't know there is an egg, then you will not be careful, right? And egg will be broken. So likewise, Holy Spirit is in us. If we don't know that Holy Spirit is in us, then we will not be careful and we will let Holy Spirit grieve. And Holy Spirit will be quenched. Go down. If Holy Spirit goes down, then we cannot do the work of God. Acts chapter 2 verse 20, 38. Let's go there. Acts chapter, chapter 2 verse 38. Let's read together. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now repent and believe, then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent and believe. When we believe, the Holy Spirit came to us. What is the reason why Jesus died on the cross? That is not just forgive of our sin, not just to forgive our sin, but also to give us the Holy Spirit. And you know, uh, in another place it says that it is good for you if I go away because another helper will come, right? It is good for you. It says it is good for you if I go away. Why? You know, when Jesus was there, Jesus is with a human body, right? And Jesus, when Jesus was there, he is alone. So he is only in Jerusalem. 
But now Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is everywhere. Holy Spirit can be in America, Holy Spirit can be here, Holy Spirit can be uh, Northeast India, Holy Spirit can be in um, uh, Africa, or Holy Spirit can be everywhere. But Jesus, when Jesus was on this earth, he was only in Jerusalem. He could not be in India. So that's why it is good for you if I go away. That's what Jesus said. It is good for you. If any Christians know he is safe, but he doesn't know that he received the Holy Spirit, then he forget what he's supposed to do. And also, that is the precious gift. So here it says, it is a gift of God. And it is a great loss for him. Even though now you are receiving salvation, God forgive you through, by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And when you are forgiven, only the Holy Spirit comes as a gift. But if you don't know that, it is loss for you. Right? Suppose, uh, somebody bought for you, like um, rice or food, let's say food. He bought chicken and rice, both. But you doesn't know that chicken is there. And you eat only the rice. Oh, very difficultly. I mean, uh, only eating rice is quite uh, difficult, right? Without uh, curry. Chicken also is there. Very nice. But you don't know that. You eat only the rice. And it is lost for you, right? The chicken is already, chicken payment also already paid. It's given to you. Everything is paid. But you don't know and you don't take it. It is lost for you. So likewise, those who are saved, if they don't realize that Holy Spirit is in me and you are neglecting the, the leading of Holy Spirit, the guidance of Holy Spirit, the power of Holy Spirit, then it is lost for that person. So we, we must know Holy Spirit is in me. And the Holy Spirit is working in me so that, you know, uh, we, can, we can do many works for the Lord and we can be glorified when we, we meet with our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the reason why the Holy Spirit is in, in us. Those who receive salvation by the grace of God should know that Holy Spirit is in them. Holy Spirit is in us. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Shall we read it together? That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and ground in, grounded in love. Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. So, uh, we have to remember that through the Holy Spirit, we can understand more and more about Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ should be rooted in our heart. And Jesus Christ's love should be rooted in our heart. So that we can also love to others. And also we can be comforted by the love of Jesus Christ. And Christians, we should remember that our body is a temple of Holy Spirit, or this is a temple of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, it says, right? Uh, do you not know that your body is the temple of Holy Spirit, who is, who is in you? So the Holy Spirit resides in us. Why Apostle Paul said this in Corinthian church, to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians? We know among the Corinthian brothers and sisters, there are some Christians who committed sin like adultery which is not bible said which was not found even in among the gentile that kind of sin which christians shouldn't be committed that kind of sin they committed and the most important thing is they didn't repent that's why apostle paul was rebuking for that sin to that kind of brother. That uh, you don't you know that your body is the temple of Holy Spirit. 
you are bought at a price. So you don't know that you are bought at a price. You, that means you're, you are not yours anymore. It's bought by somebody. Then who bought? It is Jesus. He paid his blood. So don't you know that? You have been bought by price. And that is the blood of Jesus. Jesus even bought our body with his price. So when we receive salvation, our sinful and lowly body become the temple of God or temple of Holy Spirit. So it is not, it is not belongs to me anymore. The, uh, the body belongs to God. But now, um, because he purchased, but now we are just taking care of this body. Right? We are caretaker. Actually, we are caretaker. So how should we take care? Even in, there are so many in the Bible, in the Matthew also, right? When he come back, he will take an account. How you take care? We are like a manager. How we take care? Like a manager take care of the owner's property. And when owners come, they give their uh, account, right? So we are taking care. So how you take care? You have to give an account. This is the temple of Holy Spirit. It is not ours. Of course, the Holy Spirit helps us to take care if we give, uh, if we, you know, give chance to Holy Spirit. In our body, Holy Spirit dwells. And that means God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit is in us. Right? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is never separated with God. The Holy Spirit never separated with Jesus Christ. That means God the Father, triune God is in us, living in us. Then how should we live? How should we respond? How should we take care of our body? There are many people who doesn't care and try to destroy the body with, their, uh, with many things, right? Some people uh, drink, they don't care. We know drinking is not good. Many people die because of uh, liver damage. And if you drink too much, uh, like uh, alcohol, then it damages your liver. I, I met, I saw many people. Even doctors say, don't drink anymore. If you drink again, you, your life is in danger. But they go and drink and they die. I have many friends like that also, who pass away very young age, because they drink too much. Um, I know one of my, uh, like, um, he's elder than me. He drinks, and doctor said not not to drink anymore. So he doctor gave medicine, and after taking medicine one month, and you know, all, he is somehow all right. Ah, I'm all right now. Then he will buy not the strong one. What we call it, beer, beer, yeah, beer. So he will say, oh, this is nothing, just beer, only soft drink. He said, it's soft drink. And he will drink. And after four, seven, one week, two weeks, oh, this is too soft. And he will drink, he will buy. And of course, he has uh, many properties. But he died. I think uh, he couldn't reach 60 also. He died. He, he shortened his life, knowingly, right? Even doctors say, don't drink anymore, <laughs> but he continued to do it. And same, there are many people, I know many people who, uh, who die. If I go hometown, many people I see, you know, they, they are very strong, they are like, but when I see them, like same my age or a little bit elder, a little bit young, younger, their face is very weakly, hardly able to walk like this. And what happened? Then drinking too much. <laughs> So they destroy. Even there are Christians. They are Christians. And some people smoke, right? S smoke. And there are so many things. And I strongly recommend, I mean strongly uh, want to say that those who are using like a, a tobacco also, as a Christians, we should remember this, Holy Spirit. The triune God is in us. So we should not, uh, we, we should not try to let them grieve. We should be. We should care them. We we need to be. We need to give an account when Jesus returns. 
when our Lord returns, the Trinity God will take an account from each one of us. So let us remember the Holy Spirit dwell in us. And we have to offer our body as a living sacrifice which is acceptable to God. Living sacrifice means we have to give to God to or used by God. Let's not use ourselves. Let's give ourselves, our body, to be used by God. There is a living sacrifice. We forsake our desire, our will, and we use our body for the Lord. Uh, you know, uh, Hebrew chapter, sorry, what is that? Romans chapter 12. Sorry, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Let's go back, uh, John chapter 14. Verse John chapter 14, verse um, 18 to 20. Let me read again. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. At that day you will know that I am in my Father and, you in, and in, I in you. I will not leave you orphans. We are not orphans. And God, our Lord is not leaving us as orphans. God never and ever leaves us just like orphans. Remember, He will never leave us. And uh, where is that? Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, right? I will never leave you. No matter what, I will never leave you. He is always with us. And He helps us in our weaknesses, encourages us when we are down, and He keep our body and spirit safe all the time. So remember, the Lord never leave us. We may live to God, but God will never leave us. He is always with us. So, even um, when you go, uh, Pastor Kim used to say, if you go to bar, then you are taking the Holy Spirit, the Trinity God in there. If you go somewhere which is where it's not a good place, if you're going, that means Trinity God is also along with you. Knowing that, will you be happy? Even sometime, you know, uh, where you go which is not right, you cannot take your uh, physical father also, right? <laughs> or parents, you cannot take there. It's not right to take there. So how can we take the Trinity God there? So we should not go where there is not... Uh, suitable for God. There is a hymn, uh, it goes like this, right? I have found a friend in Jesus. And it goes, through all the world forsake me, and Satan tempts me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. Even though all the world forsake me, but God will not leave us. Christians should not forget that the Lord is with us all the time. No matter what situation we are facing, or no matter what, whatever difficult condition we are in, but the Lord is with us. So we should not be worried. We should not be feared. Right? God is with us. Best thing, what could be the best thing? Best thing in the world is not better than the Lord is in me. One, one person say this. The best thing in the world is not better than the, the Lord who is in me. Yeah. Who can be better than God? Right? Who can be better than God? But that God is in you. So the best things of the world cannot be better than God because He is in you. forget that fact that God is with us. That's why when we are in difficult situation or a difficult condition, sometimes we are worried and we, are, uh, we fear and we are disappointed and we are frustrated and we are tempted into sin. When we, are, we fear, when we are um, disappointed, then the sin enters to us. We are tempted to sin. In the Old Testament time, God gave the Holy Spirit only to the special people, right? You know, 
Holy Spirit comes and goes. So those who are very special, they receive the Holy Spirit. Like uh, let's say David, King David. The Holy Spirit comes to King David and after some time, when he is not proper, the Holy Spirit left. Shemshan, when the Holy Spirit comes, he tear the lion into two pieces. But when his cut, hair was cut, Holy Spirit left. Right? But in the New Testament, Holy Spirit, once Holy Spirit comes, it lives forever. So King David said, Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Do not take away your, your, your Holy Spirit from me. Because sometimes when they sin, when they, they cannot live properly, then Holy Spirit is taken away from them. So that's why King David said, Do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. But now, we don't need to pray like that, like King David. Because Holy Spirit never and ever leaves Christians. He lives in us forever. He never go away from us. So Bible says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit lives in us. So if we don't obey the Word of God, if we don't obey the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will quench. Sometimes, you know, sometimes, how we can be how we can quench the Holy Spirit? Sometimes Christians can deceive the Holy Spirit and we can commit sin. There is a time we quench the Holy Spirit. Quenching the Holy Spirit means we do not obey the Holy Spirit who is in us, who is God, who saved us, who wants to lead us. And then the Holy Spirit cannot walk freely. If Holy Spirit, if we don't obey the Holy Spirit, then Holy Spirit cannot walk freely. And we limit the power of Holy Spirit. You know, even the, you know, suppose let's say there's a light. Light can, if light is free, then one bulb can cover whole room. But if you cover with something, then that you can limit that, that light. Right? That valve you can limit to reach all the room. So likewise, Holy Spirit is in us. But we can limit the Holy Spirit. The, the power of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit point out our mistake and our sin through the Word of God. So uh, we need to go together God, uh, Holy Spirit want us to read the Word of God. Holy Spirit want us to meditate the Word of God. And Holy Spirit want us to talk with God. The Holy Spirit. We can quench the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit never leaves us. He wants to walk. He wants to use its Christians. Until we stand before the Lord, the Holy Spirit will be with us and He will help us until we meet with the Lord. And that's why we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. That's why Holy Spirit comes to us. Sometimes, you know, we suffer uh, physical suffering. We face physical suffering. And we go through the trials. And we think, if God is uh, with me, why? Why, you know, I'm suffering? Why God leaves me? Like that we think. Why he is not helping me if he is with me? He is in me. Why he is not helping me? It means God, Holy Spirit leaves me. God leaves me. Left me alone. But let's remember God never le leave us. God is always with us. Do you remember Joseph? Right? God allows Joseph to be sold in Egypt as a servant. And later, even though you know, he, he don't do anything wrong. He was suffering so much. He was in a prison, right? After sold by his brother. It is not only that. It doesn't stop there. Even the, what is that, Potiphar. He was not doing any mistake, any wrong, but he was put into prison. So he might have questioned that time, God, I, I'm not doing any mistake, any wrong. Why? I'm suffering so much. Actually, through that trials, God is training him. 
And at, at last, God took out all the afflictions, all the suffering, and he became the governor of Egypt. You know, that's the purpose. Why? God let him suffer. And also, Apostle Paul, before he was beheaded in Rome, he went through all kind of suffering. So you will see when you read the uh, book of Romans, he's, he mentioned many perils, means many suffering. And also book of Acts, he mentioned many sufferings. How much he suffered? He was beaten many times. He was stoned to death. I mean, uh, he was left as if he, uh, people think that he, he is dead. So, he suffered so much. But he was encouraged. Because Holy Spirit encouraged him. It doesn't stop there. So who gives strength? It is the Holy Spirit. It is the God. So it means God never leave Apostle Paul. When he is suffering, who is, when he is in the uh, forest, in front of tiger, in front of wild beast, God is not leaving him alone. God was with him. God never leaves us alone. God lead. Of course, sometimes God let us suffer in this world. God wants us to overcome the world. That's why he, he, um, you know, he brings this kind of troubles, affliction, suffering in our life. He put us into this world so that we can overcome the world by trusting God, by trusting Him. So, it's, the song says, whole world, the whole world forsake me, but Jesus never forsake us. Jesus, Jesus never leave us, or God never leave us. We might turn away from God, but Jesus will not go away. Uh, let's go back again. Let me read verse 19. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I leave you, will leave you, will leave also. You will leave also, sorry. A little while longer, the world will not see me. What does it mean? A little while. So just remember the scenario. Jesus was talking to the disciples, right? A little while longer and the world will not see me. Uh, see me no more and but you will see me it's so comforting right the world will not see me but you will see can you understand that the world those who don't know Jesus those who don't believe Jesus for uh, Jesus is disappearing because he is going to die after some time for a while little a little while he is dying on the cross and after that the world the people of the world will not see him anymore but Christians will continue to see by faith we see him the world means the people those who are not born again the world will not see me those who are not saved will not see Jesus anymore after after the crucifixion the world could not see Jesus anymore so those who believe Jesus Christ, those who receive the salvation, they can see Jesus. Jesus showed him after he died, after his death, after the resurrection. He showed, you know, he was 40 days, as we, I told you in the beginning also, right? After the resurrection, it was 40 days. He was eating with the disciples. He showed many people. He, he, didn't, he did not show himself only to the disciples. But he was seen by 5,000. He was seen by Cephas. He, he was seen by two people. He was seen by five people. He was seen by a uh, uh, group. He was seen by alone. So, he, do, who have seen Jesus after the resurrection? Who are they? They are the ones who are saved. They are the ones who are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Those who have faith. Those who receive the salvation. They are the ones. So, Jesus said, the world will not see me, but you will see me. So they have seen. Now, we don't see Jesus, but we see Jesus. How we see? When we read the Bible, we see Jesus, right? But non-believers, when they, they, they read the Bible, even though they come to church, they read the Bible, they cannot see. We see Jesus. 
true Christians can see Jesus. That's why we rely on him, we trust on him, we follow him. There's a reason. If we don't see him, we cannot follow. Those who don't see him, why it is difficult to follow him? Why it is difficult to follow him? Because they don't see him. Now, when you call the children, like a baby, there we have so many baby, um, you call, even though there is a sound, if they don't see, actually uh, they will not come, right? But if they see father, even the father, come, 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 then they will run to the father. They will run to the mother because they see him. So we see our father. So Jesus says, come, come, come to me. Or go there, we call, we come. We do, do this, we do. That's what we trust our father. Because we see him. Through the Bible, we see him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 15, verse 3 onwards, if we read, many people, he, he has seen by many people after the resurrection. It is not only the disciples. He was seen by one time 500 people. Because I live, you will also live. You will live also, here it says. What does it mean? It means he lives. God is living, so we are also living. Those who believe him, they also they are living. But those who don't believe, they are dead. Right? They are dead. That's why Jesus said, you know, the one who wants to follow him, and he said, let me bury my dead father and come back and follow you. Let the dead, but dead bury their own dead. So the people of the world are all dead, but we are alive because our Lord is living. We are also alive. Those who saw Jesus after resurrection, they are they are, they are who receive the life of resurrection from Jesus. That's why they could see Jesus Christ. We cannot see Jesus with our eyes. I mean Jesus' body after his resurrection. Right? It's because his body is finished. But we can see through the word of God. Through the Bible. So we have to continue to read. You know, sometime, let's say, even you never visit some country. Okay, what would be the best? Okay, let's say America. As a, everyone wants to see there, right? But suppose you read about the America. There are so many books. There are so many things, right? What, what are the best things there? What are the things? So after reading the books, you may you may able to know many things. Right? Even though you've never been there, you, you can know many things. So that's how we may not see Jesus, Jesus' body. But through the Bible, we know how much He loves us, how, oh, what kind of person He is, uh, how, how kind He is, and what anger He is, what He can do, what power. So all things we can know in the Bible. Actually, when we say we study the Bible, we are studying about Jesus. And that's how we know and Holy Spirit teaches us the truth. To know the truth. And when we go to heaven, we will see His face face to face. And that will be forever. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. Um, shall we read together? For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. Now we, are, we, are, we see in mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now, maybe after reading, maybe like a reading about the America, you may not know very clearly, right? You may not know um, all the things, but... When you go there, you know. Of course, something you know, oh, this is what I read. Wow, nice. But you feel better, right? When you see with your own eyes. So, one day we will be in heaven. We will see face to face. What we are reading now, what we can think now, what we, uh, we are told now, we will see everything in heaven. 
when we go to heaven. Okay, let's go back to verse 20. At that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. That day. What is the dead day? Dead day means um, like uh, when the Holy Spirit came down that time, disciple came to know that Jesus is, you know, in God and God is in Jesus. Perfectly they know. Before also they know, but because Jesus taught many times, but they came to know perfectly when the Holy Spirit came down. So that's why they give up everything and they follow Jesus. And they are united with God after the Holy Spirit came down. And another way we can say is that there is when we receive the salvation. When we receive the salvation, uh, we, uh, we, we know that the Lord is in us. No? When we receive the salvation, when we are born again, we come to know that the Lord, the triune God is in me, living in me. We understand that. So that there means when we receive the salvation and the other one is when Pentecost, uh, the, the Holy Spirit came on this earth, the day of Pentecost. So these two can be referred. When we receive the salvation, that day we know we are united with the Spirit of God. We are together with God. So uh, we also remember, what is that? Um, two person was walking, uh, going the village. You remember what is the name from Jerusalem to no. yes yes yeah Emmaus sorry I don't remember Emmaus Emmaus sorry Emmaus yeah they are going you know uh, they are talking with Jesus right but they don't know that is Jesus so later God Holy Spirit opened their eyes and they see Jesus resurrected body they see so we see like this we also we see after salvation, God is always with us. And the Lord is in us and we are with the Lord. The Lord is always with me. So this is wonderful. This is miracle. Wonderful miracle. Because the Holy Spirit is our God. Holy Spirit is helping us. Holy Spirit is guiding us. Holy Spirit is leading us. Jesus came, as I told you, Jesus came as human body. So human body, human body has a limited. He cannot go everywhere. He cannot be everywhere. But now Holy Spirit is everywhere. So he can be with you. He can be, he can be with me. He can be in America. He can be in uh, everywhere. He is Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has no limit. So he is omnipresent. Om, God is omnipresent. And the God of the uh, Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Omnipresent. Omniscient, omnipresent. He can, be, he can be in our heart, everyone's heart, each one of our heart. So uh, let's remember. He is always with us. He is always with me. Uh, for the last, let's read and finish. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 24. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 24. Let me read. Can anyone hide himself in secret places? So I shall not see him, says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord. So he is omnipresent, right? Can anyone hide himself in secret places? Nobody can hide. We cannot hide. God can see. God is dwelling in us. So um, we cannot hide from God. No matter how much you want to hide. God And God is everywhere with everyone. So let's remember the Holy Spirit uh, is helping each one of us. So Holy Spirit, every moment He is. So let's, let's give the, uh, let's Holy, Holy Spirit work more mightily in us. Instead of quenching the Holy Spirit, let's do our best that Holy Spirit can use more our body and uh, you know, we can live more. We can live a better Christian's life. 
we can do the uh, better work for the Lord. Okay, let's pray for now. Merciful Heavenly Father, once again we want to thank you for teaching us with your Holy Word. And today we have learned uh, the work of Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit dwell in us. And Lord, Holy Spirit never leave us. Lord, you give us as a helper so that in our difficult times, in our troubled times, we can be comforted. And Lord, we thank you so much. And also we pray for those who are uh, neglecting the Holy Spirit and those who don't realize the Holy Spirit. Lord, help them to understand this fact. Lord, also we want to be guided by you more and more in days to come. So Lord, please guide us and lead us so that we can do your work more and more in days to come. Lord, also we pray for those who are not here, our brothers and sisters, Lord, be with them, and may your grace be upon them and let them understand your grace more and more. And Lord, also we have a plan, uh, many things, church outing, and also the seminar, and also the, there will be many other programs coming up as we, uh, as we draw near to the end of this year, there will be many things, many programs may come. So, Lord, please be with us so that we can do all the things accordingly how we plan it. And, Lord, also pray for the world who is uh, having a lot of problems, is a lot of in chaos. Lord, especially Israel and uh, in uh, Middle East country, Lord, um, help all the leaders so that they can compromise and the who those who are suffering we pray for them and also your gospel can be preached more lord um, be with the leader so that the uh, tension can can be stopped and your uh, gospel can preach without any problem and thank you once again for bringing us here this morning and lord continue to bless us and continue to pray for the uh, church as we have a mission field lord Take care of all, all of them. We commit everything unto your mighty hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, thank you. Let's sing one hymn.